trying to predict the future is a discouraging and hazardous occupation. If by some miracle a prophet could describe the future exactly as it was going to take place, his predictions would sound so absurd, so far-fetched, that everybody would laugh into scorn. Only if what I tell you appears absolutely unbelievable have we any chance of visualizing the future as it really will happen. The only thing we can be sure of about the future is that it will be absolutely fantastic. Hello and a very warm welcome to Mexico. It's race day and Formula E has moved 6,000 miles from Europe to Puebla. Around two hours drive from the capital Mexico City for round eight of the ABB FIA Formula E World Championship. We're in Puebla for the very first time on a track that's new to most of the drivers. Now one thing that's gonna play a pivotal part this weekend is the weather. It's hot, it's muggy, and there's a huge chance of rain. We've reached the halfway stage of the season. We've had six different winners. And as always, the season has been filled with drama, filled with incident, and filled with lots to talk about. Last time out in Monaco, people are saying it was the best Formula E race ever. Let's find out why. The Monaco E Prix. All five lights are on, and we go green in Monaco. Evans has got a good getaway. He might have the inside coming into Sandebot. Now we're into the hairpin. Oh, and there's a contact there. That is Sims in trouble. Honestly, these guys are crazy. Robin Fry's on the attack. He's through. Fry's ahead of Da Costa. Fern is going for Evans. Round the outside of the Nunu Chicane. And Fern gets through, and Da Costa's going to get caught up in that. He just drove me off the track. Da Costa does the fan boost in the tunnel. Fry's covers the inside. Da Costa sweeps to the outside. Turns in. Takes the lead. Fries on the inside into Sandabot. Evans sweeps through. He's going for it now. Oh! What a tough move! Evans up through Beau Ravage. Takes the lead of the Monaco E Prix. Good job, good job. Coming down into the new New Belgian game. De Costa to the outside and to the lead. Most darkness. De Costa comes through the final corner. De Costa wins in Monaco. An unreal end to the E Prix. And Fries gets second, does he? Yes! Calm down, calm down. Tell me that I just won the Monaco E Prix. Yes, Monaco was special, special indeed. And I'm joined by three-time IndyCar champion, Dario Franchitti, and a man who successfully studied drama and English at Birmingham <laughs> University and is our lead commentator, Jack Nichols. Not that successfully, unfortunately, oh, really? but uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Jack, everyone's saying it was the best E Prix ever. I loved it. It had everything. It had drama. It had racing to the last lap. It was a proper race circuit. And talk about old school. They've been racing there since, what, 1929. So it had everything. Loved it. Hopefully, Puebla can, uh, can give us something similar. We kind of, in a roundabout way, brought that track up to date, you know, with the electric racing, Dario. And those three uh, drivers at the front, Freintz, Evans and Da Costa really put on a show. Yeah, they put on a great show. Formula E put on a great show. Apparently you couldn't overtake in Monaco. They were overtaken everywhere. <laughs> it was just incredible to watch. That last lap pass from Da Costa, sublime. Yeah, it really was. We'll have more on Monaco a little bit later on. But Jack, this is a brand new track to Formula E and it's something special. Lots of twists and turns, lots of scope for drama, which, I mean, when you say drama in Formula E, <laughs> going back to drama, uh, it, it's, it's always around, but this track in particular is going to bring something special. Well, the drivers are really enjoying it. It's really flowing, and you've got this quite unique banking here at the final corner, unique in Formula E anyway, and this is how much of a difficult challenge it is for the drivers. That's Jean-Eric Verne, two-time champion, wrestling with the car. Jake Dennis wrestling with the car. We saw Norman Nato in the Venturi having an absolutely huge moment towards the end, Dario, and you've been heading towards the wall on an oval enough times in your life. Yeah, more times than I'd care to count, but yeah, there's such a compromise, the normal part of the track, but this last sector here, it, you can have the car working on the first two sectors or the last corner, not both. All right, let's go back to Monaco and uh, find out more about that epic race, shall we, with the guys who were involved at the front. Monaco is, is a special place, you know. 
the full Monaco Grand Prix circuit, plays host to the Monaco E-Prix. I think you could see the show that we brought to everybody was absolutely incredible. I think we gave everybody 45 minutes plus a lap of incredible excitement. We really showed what, what Formula E is all about. I've never seen a, a race in Monaco with so much action. All five lights are on. And we go green in Monaco. Evans has got a good getaway. He might have the inside coming into Sandoval. I think like every corner has a story to tell. Now we're into the hairpin. Oh, and there's contact there. That is Sims in trouble. Honestly, these guys are crazy. I was putting a lot of pressure on myself for that weekend. We clearly needed a win to relaunch our championship, you know? So to go into, into Monaco in the hunt for the top few places in the championship and, and to capitalize on that, it's, uh, it's really important. Robin Fry's on the attack. He's through. Tries to head up to Costa. We had uh, great battles with uh, Antonio and Mitch uh, till the end. Some of the past moves were, were, were pretty pretty epic. The one up through uh, Beau Rivage was unexpected, but it just sort of presented itself. He's going for it now. Oh, what a move. Evans up through Beau Rivage takes the lead of the Monaco e -Prix. Good job, good job. He gave me just enough space to get through. That's definitely what I'm, I'm quite proud of. With these guys, you can battle very hard, but always fair, which that's how racing should be. Trines covers the inside. Tocosta sweeps to the outside, turns in, takes the lead. It was a really stressful race, especially after that with the safety car, because I had it obviously the energy disadvantage. Let's keep our targets under control. But I'm going to struggle here. I knew I was going to have an advantage of it on, on him there at the end. But one thing is knowing you have the advantage, one thing is actually using it in, in your own advantage. And this is it, the next breaking zone critical for the win of this race. For that move after the tunnel for the chicane, I really thought, you know, it was, it was my only, my last chance. I did that corner as soon as I came out of it, of it I was like, damn it, man, I'm going to win the Monaco Ypres. So I decided to go for it. To Costa, to the outside, and to the lead. All locked up, gets it stopped. To Costa takes the lead on the final lap. Most of class. To Costa cleared him. To Costa comes through the final corner. To Costa wins in Monaco. Like I was defending hard. I was trying to coast as early as possible. In the exit of the last corner, I saw his light blinking, which means that he basically ran out. Unfortunately, Robin got me on the line. He just had enough energy. And Brian's gets second, does he? Yes, an unreal end. Come down and tell me that I just won. It was one of the happiest moments of my career. That brilliant win for Da Costa really kickstarts his season and puts him in the thick of the championship fight. Envisions Robin Freitz tops the table with fellow Dutchman Nick de Vries in third for Mercedes IQ. Just 16 points separate the top seven drivers. It's going to be an interesting battle to find out who is going to be our season champion. It's going to be special. It's going to be really special. Now, Dario, first of all, I must apologise. I keep getting all your accolades mixed up. There's not that many of them. Come on, <laughs> <laughs> Three-time Indy 500 champion. Aye. Well, there you go. Four-time Indy car champion. Uh, gentlemen, qualifying this afternoon was special. Uh, uh, as always, welcome on board. Hi, Pedro. Yeah. Hey, Pedro. You all right? yeah. <laughs> Mega driver. He'll be asking. He'll be asking for an appearance fee. Yeah. Uh, the, the first group that went out, it, it, it always seems to be uh, uh, Jack. Really confusing. They go out too late. Something happens, and that's exactly what happened earlier on today. They just don't want to be the first car out on track, and as a result, everybody doesn't want to be the first and that's fine and then they go oh goodness we better get across the line before we don't get a lap in at all so then you end up with this situation where they're racing each other they're side by side and it's and it's chaos and what can they do differently i think that's what they need to to look at whatever it is the long and short of it the championship leaders are starting towards the back robin france is down in 20th on the grid you've got nick de Vries down in 16th position who's second in the standing so all of a sudden we're going to be watching them a bit today but mainly the focus is going to be the people at the front of the order. And Pascal Verlein, starting on pole position, brilliant lap from him in qualifying. If he wins the race today, he could lead the championship at the end of the day, <laughs> even though he was ninth. 
uh, coming in this morning. He's already jumped up the order a little bit, and it's really remarkable how quickly things can swing around. Yeah, it's crazy. Dario, his car looked like it was really well set up. Yeah, it was really well set up, as Oliver Rowlands was too. But is that going to be the case after over 30 laps here this afternoon? That's the, the question everybody's asking themselves right now. A yeah. couple of uh, serious pinch points on this track, Jack. Seven turn and one, 11. Turn one's going to be really, really busy. There's no doubt about that. Turn 11 is going to be tough. We're in for a lot of action, I think. All right, thank you, gentlemen, as always. So we're down by the Panasonic Jaguar racing car, Sam Bird's car down in P18, but we're not going to dwell on the position because we've seen uh, well, some marvellous moves from you in Monaco. You moved up nine places on the grid. Can we expect to see something like that again today? I hope so, Nicky. That's the plan. Obviously, quali didn't go to plan. I thought she did quite a good lap, uh, except it was a, a race to turn one and I lost a lot of time in, in battling and uh, unfortunately Robin locked up, went wide and anyway, it is what it is. We start here, I think we've got a good race car, let's try and go forwards and if we can get some points today, that'd be great. We'll probably be in group two tomorrow, so looking forward to uh, better quality tomorrow. And it's a pretty kind of critical point in the championship, isn't it? Midpoint to really start to cement a bit of a lead in the championship and get some valuable points. Yeah, I just don't see that happening though. You look at all, uh, all of us at the front of the championship, we're, we're down back here somewhere. So it's, it's proving difficult to get from group one into any sort of kind of position where you can attack and, and try and win a race at the moment. But yeah, today's important tomorrow as well. We need to score some points and leave here, go to New York and, and keep on fighting. One quick question. Tire management, is that what your engineer is going to be shouting in your ear over the course of this Tire race? Tire management coupled with the energy management, yes, absolutely. Okay. This track is a, is a breaker for both. Brilliant. All Cheers. right, then. Well, Sam Bird, thank you very much. Good luck for the race. Now, just like any other city that Formula E visits, Puebla has an environmental issue when it comes to its pollution. But Formula E is here to help, to encourage more electric cars on our roads, to reduce CO2 emissions and ultimately really help in that fight against climate change. Let's take a look at what Formula E are doing. The city of Puebla and its surrounding areas are often choked with severe traffic congestion, adding to the local air pollution. Mexico's climate legislation targets emission cuts of 50% by 2050 from 2000 levels and 35% renewable energy by 2024. In 2018, Mexico reported a 68% growth in EV and hybrid vehicle sales. Puebla is home to Biomatech's first Bio-Urban 2.0 tree. The innovative system uses microalgae to clean atmospheric contaminants. with each unit reported to perform the task of 368 real trees. Pascal, you okay? Very Feeling good. confident? Still, yeah. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. Your eyes look really focused. What are you thinking about sat on pole position on a track that we've never raced on before? Yeah, about the start, obviously, um, about switch changes I have to do, um, yeah, and just focusing. I like that because you're very, always very cool, calm and collected. You've already been on the podium in Rome, you've had four top ten finishes. Surely it's results like that that give you confidence to be successful here in Mexico. Yeah, I think it gives all of us confidence. Um, I mean, this track was new for everyone, so we didn't go into a weekend with a, with a disadvantage, you know, on the other teams, so we did a good job. Um, we executed well so far and now we have to do it in the race. You mentioned earlier on that you're feeling more and more comfortable with your new team, Porsche. Uh, how does that relationship work? How long do you think it takes for you and the team to bed in together and become one solid unit? Uh, I think we are already one, one unit and it's just getting better and better. So, um, yeah, uh, I, I don't know how long it will take, but uh, yeah, it's already a very good step forward. Okay, if you win today and get the points, then you've got the real chance to really climb up to the top of the table. 
Yeah, that's the target. All right, good man. Thank Always a pleasure. You. Thank you, Pascal Verlein. Uh, we're going to make our way over to Oliver Rowland because, as you can see, there are a lot of mechanics working on his car. There's no... Uh, actually, Oliver's not here, but as you can see, uh, the, the guys are really getting stuck in. Jack, what do you think? Well, I think it's a problem with the, the radio antenna. Oh, OK. So, uh, the, the car is going to work and the car is all right, but they're struggling with the radio. So. There's so much information that comes from the radio to the teams in terms of energy management, in terms of, like Nicky was saying, managing the tires. So without the radio, it's going to be a, a tough a tough race room. So that's what they were going to get fixed. The car itself, I think, is OK and can drive, but it's going to be tough. All right, thank you, Jack. Loving your investigative work. Awesome stuff. All right, Nicky, where are you on the grid? Well, let's have a chat with the driver who is at the top of the standings and also has a rather nice view of the grid ahead. It is Robin Frines for Envision Virgin. Um, Robin, obviously having the most points coming into this weekend is a nice position to be in. Towards the back of the grid, less so. Not so good, no. Qualifying didn't really went as planned. It was a bit of a mayhem in Group 1. Everybody was bunched up together. We were fighting for positions, basically. Most important thing is do a lap, um, which we did. But then in turn one, I braked a bit too late. Um, got a bit misjudged with Mitch in front of me. Um, yeah, lost one and a half seconds, and then you're at the back of the grid. But the fact that you know your biggest competitors are kind of around you. I mean, I think you've only got really got Jean Eric Verne, who's up in yeah. P4. So, uh, does that kind of compensate for the situation? Uh, a bit. I mean, it's formally. So we go to a new track, and Group One has been quite slow compared to all the other groups. So all the let's say championship contenders are pretty much in the back. Uh, you see Da Costa is, I think, 12th, if I'm not mistaken. So he's just on the border to, to get points. The most important thing is stay out of trouble the first couple of laps, keep the car in good condition, and hopefully we get some points in the back. Yeah, keep the car in good condition. Now, that's going to be quite hard because we have seen the drivers throughout the course of today just wrestling with the cars on this track. It's not going to be easy. It's definitely not going to be easy. There's just one racing line. It's very sensitive if you just put one wheel offline. Um, which we'll probably see in the race. And yeah, if you try to do an off-take maneuver and you put a car on a dirty part, it could be ugly. Excellent. Well, uh, we're excited about it. Good luck. Keep that car on track. And um, I'm going to ask you to hold my microphone while I hopefully yeah. elegantly jump down. <laughs> Nicky Shields, Neil Nederman. <laughs> There we go. That's my exercise for the day. Thank you very much, Robin Bryant. Um, let's go and have a chat to one of his uh, biggest competitors, that's Stoffel van Dorn at the Mercedes team. Just uh, we'll head over this way, Simon. Uh, Mercedes obviously leading the team's championship, just two points ahead of Jaguar. Can we have a quick word? Of course. How are you feeling about what lies ahead? Quite a busy grid in front of you. Um, yeah, quite a few people ahead. Um, obviously, qualifying was a bit of a dogfight out there so um, yeah it wasn't really that representative but our car is quite quick um, feeling pretty good in 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 race pace so uh, let's you know let's see what we can do the attack mode is quite uh, quite challenging as well to you know implement in the strategy so we'll see it's going to be pretty time costly isn't it going through the attack mode you don't want to make a mistake i mean it's, is it going to be more strategic in this race than others i think uh, i think it will be um and also the track out of uh, the racing line is, is super, super dirty and super slippery. So taking that attack mode is already uh, a big, big challenge. So uh, let's see. I think, um, you know, it's an interesting one for everyone. I think we have a, a good chance to recover some, some positions. So I'm feeling optimistic. Fin finishing in the points? Uh, I hope so. I don't want to jinx anything. <laughs> but uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's see. Fingers crossed. Thanks very much. Back to you, Vernon. Thank you very much, Nikki. Yes, I'm with our back-to-back -back, uh, champion, the only man who's got back-to-back -back championships in Formula E, uh, Jean-Éric Vernon. He's just having a, a chat at the moment. Uh, let's see if we can dive in there. Uh, Jeff, how are you feeling? Always, uh, you know, just always very relaxed prior to a race. Yeah, no, I'm good. I'm okay. Starting P4, I think it's it's not a bad place to uh, to start from, and uh, we see what we get from there. It's going to be a complicated race, I think, for for the tyres. So you know, we. Going to do our best, like always. Fourth in Monaco and a fastest lap. That must give you a lot of confidence. Uh, P1 would have given me a bit of confidence, <laughs> I suppose. But uh, it's better than nothing. I think, you know, in this championship, consistency is key. And, uh, you know, you may even uh, win the championship by finishing fourth uh, every race, you know, this year. It's so complicated. So we'll see what happens uh, today. You mentioned that consistency is key. There's only yourself and Robin Frank's. Uh, Oliver Rollins had a, a, a disqualification who haven't had a DNF. And it's that loss of points that really makes a difference in Formula E, isn't it? 
Yeah, yeah, I think so. But at the end of the day, you know, you still need to deliver and win some races. So that's why I'm going to try under today. You're one of the most exciting drivers on the grid. Uh, you're here in fourth. Surely this is going to be easy for you to carve your way to the front, Jeff. Well, it's never easy, you know. Every Come time on. I think a Come race on. is Give easy, it's bad. <laughs> and every time I think a race is difficult, it's... it's <laughs> say difficult, but okay. All right. So we'll see. Cheers, Jeff. Thank you. All right, we're going to go and find uh, Jake Dennis over at BMW Andretti. Uh, uh, rookie, here he is, sat down, uh, looking fresh in his uh, race whites. Uh, Jake, third on the grid. Uh, you haven't had a finish lower than eighth apart from your podium in Valencia, which was pretty spectacular, the old victory. So how are you feeling going into this Mexico e -Prix? Yeah, relaxed. Uh, I find it a lot more chilled when you start at the front. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm just looking forward to the race. I think it's going to be really tyre tire dependent and, yeah, just managing this is going to be the challenging thing. But the thing with that is, I was just saying to Jack, is if we try and look after the tyre too much, then we lose too much minimum speed and then we waste too much energy. So it's just trying to get the right balance of what to do. Your rookie season, is it, is it easy or has it been difficult to adjust and get used to all the different elements of the algorithm that make a Formula E driver successful in the championship? I'm still learning it now. Like, half, half the stuff I don't know. <laughs> no, no uh, it's, you just, you adapt so quickly and you start, as long as you get the basics of what to do in the race and you, you generally can't go too far wrong, but uh, so far so good this weekend and we can try and have a clean race. All right, just quickly tell me how you feel. Are you nervous? Are you excited? What, what is it in, inside a driver's mind, the way that you're feeling now, looking forward to turn one? I'm excited. I haven't raced against Oliver since like, well, oh, karting days. And last time he did that, he put me in the wall. Oof. So uh, You don't want that here? No, we don't want that here, but I'm quite looking forward to racing a fellow Brit, uh, obviously Pascal. Uh, this is going to be a good race. All We've right. got some top, top drivers. All right, thanks, Jake. Appreciate it, Nicky. Thank you. So. Well, good to see Alejandro Gag, chairman of Formula E on the grid, having a quick word with Mitch Evans. Um, Alejandro, we're back racing for the first time here in Puebla, but back in Mexico. Yes, yes. Great to be here. Great to be in Mexico because the, the fans in Mexico are amazing. Always they come to see Formula E uh, in Mexico de Efe, in Hermano Rodriguez. Now we can bring this somewhere else in Mexico, here to Puebla. It's going to be an amazing race, very challenging for these guys. I can't wait. Excellent. Thanks, Alejandro. And Mitch, I know you've literally got to jump in the car now and put your helmet on. What is going through your mind right now, ahead of the lights going out before the first e -Prix here in Puebla? Uh, not a lot, to be honest. I'm pretty chilled. Um, to be honest, you can plan certain things, but once you get down to turn one, you you know, it, all sorts of plans go out the window. So <laughs> it's formally, <laughs> it's so unpredictable. So, um, Look, I want to obviously have a clean first corner and then go from there. Great. Expect the unexpected. Always exactly. cool and calm, though. Enjoy the race. Thanks very much, guys. Uh, back to you, Vernon. Thanks, Nicky. Oliver, just quickly, I know there's an issue with the radio. Is, is it going to affect your race? Are you going to be OK? Well, I think so. <laughs> we don't have to send up any carrier pigeons or, or, or smoke signals? Probably. I mean, yeah, I'm going to have to manage the best I can with no communication, so... So sorry, mean, just repeat that, Oliver. You're going to have no communication from the team, from yeah. the team at all. I don't know. Yeah, they might fix it. So let's see. Okay, is this something that you go through uh, no. in the sim? Have you ever practiced this? Never. But you're, you've got to be confident. Have my energy and laps on my pit board. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. uh, but what about when it goes to full course yellow and maybe a red? Will, how will people make you? Well, you just have to keep your eye on the boards. The old school marshals and boards, I guess. I mean. I only found out five or six minutes ago, so I've just been going through everything that I can do to try and manage it. Just do my best, but it's not going to be easy. All right, Oliver, go for it. Good luck. Freewheeling on his own on the track. Uh, it'd be interesting to get some comment from Dario because I wonder, I wonder if he's been in that situation where he's had no communication with his team whatsoever. That's going to be really difficult, but he is in second, so I guess all he's going to do is watch Pascal on pole position. Uh, all right, let's take a look at what we're going to race on here in Puebla in Mexico. Welcome to Puebla, Mexico. Let's take a closer look at this three kilometer, 15 turn circuit. Turn one has a lot of challenges. A long straight approaching it, so high speed, it's a wide and very bumpy braking zone. But as the driver starts to turn in, it's very difficult to actually pick out the apex and the rest of the corner is completely blind. The apex wall in turn one will require pinpoint accuracy and the track narrows down on exit. This should be fairly spicy on lap one. Turn two is a sweeping right-hander. Turn three is all about setting up for braking with turn four, where the drivers are going to be turning as they brake and regenerating as much energy into the battery as possible. It's a long, long corner from here to the straight to turn five. Very easy to gain or lose a lot of time. 
In turn 5, you'll be as wide as possible to set up for turn 6, where you need to carry as much speed as possible while using the minimum amount of road and exit, so you can be in the correct position for turn 7. This is a driver's view. Completely blind entry again. The apex is a wall, so if you get it slightly wrong, you wipe the right side of the car off on the apex wall. But if you get it wrong on exit, there's about a foot of grass. And then another wall. There is absolutely no margin for error in this fairly quick corner. Turn eight is another one of these long corners that we see at Puebla, with the wall being the apex very late in the corner, off camber, difficult corner. But then you consider that Formula E have put the attack mode activation zone, not on the outside of the corner as normal, but on a completely different part of the circuit, a whole new piece of circuit. So the time loss, if you take attack mode, is going to be massive. Cars re-entering the circuit from attack mode will have much higher speed, so look out for contact where they merge. The short straight up to 10, heavy braking for 11, off the oval again. Long turn 13, sets up for 14. Turn 14, another one of those long corners, apex somewhere about there. But this is the critical point of the track, is how early you can get back to throttle, because now you're flat out all the way around turn 15 to turn one. Any pass you want to make in turn one, starts right here. Turn 15 is a heavily banked long oval corner. The fast way through here is to get as close to the white line as possible, but that puts tremendous amount of load on the right hand side tires and by this point they're going to be really upset. One thing I learned at Iowa Speedway quite a few years ago was if you move up a little bit, especially in the race, you put less steering into the car, less load, it's going to allow the tire to live longer for that race, 45 minutes plus one lap. Turn 15 leads on to the long start finish straight to complete a lap of this very technical Puebla track. So there is the Puebla circuit. There's the beautiful view of the Puebla circuit. We are uh, about a 45 minute drive outside of the city itself. The beautiful rolling hills of this part of Mexico, two and a half thousand meters above sea level. And I think it's not surprised a lot of people coming here to, to Puebla just how pleasant it's been but it's a it's a track Dario that was first built in 1985 had a had a renovation in 2004 hosted some world touring car races but now it's really stepped up to the plate and it's a great little track as we look at Jean-Eric Verne who's going to line up in fourth yeah it really is a fabulous track and they've had to uh Formula E it put the walls up to really make it look like a Formula E track, keep that margin for error. The last corner certainly got no margin for error at all. So, uh, yeah, fabulous track, and it's um, high, high degradation, low grip. So that means all these drivers have really got the work cut out today. Jake Dennis starting third, the 26-year-old turned 26 on uh, Wednesday, I think it was, and what a late birthday present it would be to get a podium finish, as he says, and uh, fighting with Oliver Rowland, and as we say if he has no radio for this race it's going to be so so tough for him like i can't like part i think this would be cool if this is how it was but it should be like this for the whole of the grid if it's going to be cool that's, that's, that's your the, problem right yeah. all the other guys have got these very intelligent engineers and banks of engineers telling them exactly what to do with tire wear today with energy consumption all that stuff and if, if oliver's on his on his own what I would do is I'd, I'd take a reading off of Pascal and sort of shadow Pascal um, and then see where you were towards the end of the race. But it's, it's, it's not an impossible task, but if he hasn't got radio, it's very, very difficult to compete with these, not just drivers, but you're competing against all the teams as well, and you yeah. do not on your own. Pascal Verlein will be starting from the front of the grid. He has never had a win, Pascal Verlein, the Porsche driver, second his best ever result really burst onto the scene in season five with Mahindra. A few flashes since then, nothing quite as strong as that, but maybe that will change this afternoon. The first ever Puebla E Prix, the 24th venue to host a Formula E race, and after the absolutely outstanding action in Monaco six weeks ago, we are all set for round eight of the ABB FIA Formula E World Championship. And we go green in Mexico. And they make contact. I don't believe it. Oh, that was a mad bang. This just feels like it's bubbling. Push, 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 push. Yes, yes. What a Sábado y domingo, siempre tú regresas conmigo. 
The fourth largest city in Mexico begins the America's leg of the ABB FIA Formula E World Championship. Welcome to the Puebla E Prix. It's a new track for the championship. It's a new track for the drivers, but it's the same mix of close walls, close racing, and a jumbled up grid. So let's take a look at how these 24 drivers will go charging down towards the first corner. There you can see the oval circuit with the infield layout for Formula E, adapted for Formula E, and it's Sergio Sete Camera and Joel Ericsson, the two Dragon drivers who are at the back of the grid because of penalties. Then you've got some of the championship front runners. Robin Freintz leads the standings. He's 20th on the grid. Van Dorn is 6th, he's 21st. Sam Bird is 5th, he's 18th on the grid. Nick De Vries is 2nd in the championship standings. He is going to be starting all the way down the order in 14th on the grid. It really is going to be fascinating to see whether those drivers can climb up through the order and score any valuable points. It's the front runners from Monaco, Antonio Felix da Costa and Mitch Evans, who are starting 11th and 12th respectively, just outside of the points. So it could be a big day for them. But as we move into the top 10, on the right-hand side, it is the teammate of the pole sitter. This is Andre Lotterer. He's only had one points finish this season, but that was a second in Valencia. Next to him, ninth on the grid, the Audi Sport app Schaeffler entry of Rene Rast. Audi having two cars inside the top 10 at the start of a race for the first time this season. Then it's Lucas de Grassi, the other Audi, right up in front of his teammate in eighth position. Alexander Sims starts seventh on the grid. He did two laps in the dry today, and he managed to qualify seventh. One of the drives of the qualifying session. He starts up behind Eduardo Mortara. It's his first, his best qualifying since the first race of the season back in Diria. Then it's Max Gunter, his fifth Super Bowl of the season in the eighth race. But can he start to pick up some big points? jean eric Verne starts fourth, the same as he started and then finished in Monaco. The two-time DS to Cheetah champion lining up in fourth on the grid. Jake Dennis, only his second top 10 qualifying, and only the second time he's out qualified his teammate Max Gunter. He lines up third. Oliver Rowland has his fifth front row of the season, his uh, fifth front row of his career, his best result of the season in qualifying, but he is up behind Pascal Verlein. It's his second pole position. It's Porsche's second pole position. Both of their first poles came in Mexico. They didn't manage to win either of those races. The scene is set, the sun is out, there were worries about storms. I think there might be a little bit of rain later, but most likely in about 45 minutes plus one lap's time. Alongside me, Jack Nichols, is the three-time Indy 500 winner, four-time IndyCar champion, Dario Franchitti. Formula E's 24th venue, Dario. And I think we're all looking forward to this. Oh, it's a cracker, isn't it? The, the, the circuit is, so, there's so many unknowns. The circuit has got two very different characters. The infield, that last oval corner as well. Tire manager is going to be critical. This race is going to be an absolute corker, Jack. So, the cars lining up on the grid, ready to go for this 45-minute plus one lap race. The championship contenders are all the way down the back of the field, but those who are starting first, second, third on the grid are just away from that championship lead group. A big result today, a big point score today, and they go into the second and half of the season really involved in the championship fight. Emil Lindsay there, the team principal of Porsche. Here come the lights, all five lights are on. And we go green in Puebla. Oh, it's a bad start from Roland. Roland's going nowhere and he's absolutely slowing down. Pascal Verlein leads the way. It's a great start from Max Gunter, who's attacking his teammate into turn one. The two BMW I Andretti's side by side and Gunter has somehow managed to get up into second position. It's a huge, burst of mud and dirt on the exit of the first corner, but Verlein leads, it's Gunter second, Dennis third, Vern fourth, Mortara is fifth, Sims is up into sixth, Roland is still in the fight then, but he's managed to get going, but a long, long way down the field, so that's a really strange one, he just seemed to have no power off the line, Verlein holds the lead. Here they come, down towards turn eight, attack mode activation is on the outside there, but we'll get into that when the uh, attack mode window opens. Gunter came from nowhere, started in fifth position. Oh, and in the wall is Cassidy. Nick Cassidy in the Envision Virgin car looks to be out of the race already. Broken front left, he is done, and that might bring out the virtual, um, the uh, full course yellow pretty much instantly. He's ground to a halt, might even be a full safety car. Yeah, he's got to use the car again tomorrow, Jack, so he can't damage it too much by dragging the bottom of it along the circuit. The drivers come in to turn 13, setting up 
now that this is a point of the lap where you think, okay, got to get off the next hairpin, turn 14, as we see the safety car coming out, a full safety car. The tracks, uh, the, the pack is going to pack right back up behind the safety car now. Okay, safety car deployed. Everybody will slow down. And uh, Pascal Verlein then got the lead. This is Oliver Rowland, 13th position. So, I mean, maybe in all the chaos of the radio, not having radio, was he not told to go into start mode or there's just no way of knowing but I've never I don't think I've ever seen as Sergio said the camera's given a drive-through penalty for uh, changing parts on his car but I've never seen that sort of start before in Formula E where a car just bogs down like that so we're behind safety car 43 minutes plus one lap to go here in Puebla I've never seen a start like that from Roland. No, and these cars are so complicated. Yeah, you're right, Jack. If, if there's no radio communication, they've got to tell them which buttons to push. I mean, just look at the dashboard on its own. And uh, possibly Oliver Roland was in the wrong the wrong mode, heading off uh, from the start. And to be honest, if he has no communication, that is just the start of what is going to be a very long day for Oliver Roland. Did a phenomenal job in qualifying him and the Nissan team. And uh, this is not what you want to see. Right, here's a look at the start. Watch Roland on the right. And he... He, he pulls off the line, OK, but then has no other power. And Gunter just gets a great start. God, I mean, Gunter got a start that John Force in the, in the NHRA would be proud of. And then, yeah, look how much it narrows up, though, on exit. And the, and the fact that the whole field got through there without any damage. So very, very impressive. I thought that was going to be a, 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 a choke point for sure on that first lap. There you see it again. And uh, Roland down. He instantly knew he had nothing and he tried to pull out the way of everyone. Yeah, which is really a good thing to do. He's not trying to defend or anything stupid like that. That would have caused everywhere. chaos. We're recovering this car. It's going to be on driver's left. Follow the safety car. You can see they three wide in the back. Alexander Lynn got shuffled back, but then through the next series of corners, he managed to pass uh, Sam Bird again. So that was interesting. Phenomenal start from Pascal Verlein from Poldo. And he's already looking in the mirrors at this point, looking to the breaking point of turn one. But it's plain sailing for him as he comes through turn one. I'm presuming that left-hand side of the grid was is much cleaner, maybe, on the racing line. And that's what helped Gunter as well. Yeah, definitely. You see how dirty it is. Just here, you'll see how dirty right, the offline is. Well, that sounded so weird, didn't it? Yeah, it really did. And you can see all the information's blanked off on the screen. But uh, yeah, so much information going on. And this is a horrible feeling, everybody just going straight past you. So this is Ver Vern tries to go to the left, Roland then goes to the left, and then Vern has to switch back to the right. So it was a really dramatic moment for, for Jean Eric Vern. So we're still on board with Roland coming into turn four. So we managed to get back going again. Still behind the safety car in Puebla, and this is on board from Vern. Goes left, then goes right, because Oliver Rowland was slow off the line. And that really cost Jean Eric Vern a lot of time there. He was on the dirty side of the grid anyway watch the BMW side by side he's, he's hoping that Max Gunter is going to bash in to his teammate Jake Dennis but not to happen look at the dirt on offline though and that's what the drivers are really dealing with and are going to be dealing with all day as that dirt is replaced by the marbles I've seen Nick Cassidy walking back guys it's been a, a season of uh, a testing seat rookie season shall we say he had a solid enough qualifying 13th on the grid Nick Cassidy and uh, there is Sylvain Filippi the managing director on the left hand side but got caught up in something at the start and it's going to be no points let's see if we can see what happened just look at the back and Cassidy was 13th oh I think he's gone in himself he just was going side by side with Evans yeah he got on the marbles and got on the dirt jack and that was it and Nick Cassidy uh, New Zealand driver Kiwi knows how to win and everything but it just hasn't gone his way he's been quick he is a rapid driver but just not his gone his way at all he's on board right now and there you see to the left the damaged Envision Virgin car, and that was very much it. Now, uh, the team have confirmed that Roland, they, they didn't get that problem fixed. They were obviously trying to, but they didn't manage to. So Oliver Roland has no radio communication. Uh, Buemi's been given a 10 second stop and go time penalty, um, which uh, I think was announced before the, before the start of the race, similar to the uh, um, Dragon cars and worth pointing out, Ericsson in 21st place is Joel Ericsson, a 20, a 22 year old Swede who uh, who is making his debut this weekend. But that's Pascal Verlein leading the way in the black and white Porsche. Then it's the two blue and white BMWs of Max Gunter and uh, Jake Dennis. Then it's Jean Eric Verne in the black and gold DS to Cheetah in fourth. Eduardo Mortara in the white and black uh, Venturi is in fifth position. And there's Alex Lynn into the pits. 
Okay. So he was 16. Was that a tactical decision to change fresh tires? set of tires or something? Possibly. I mean, he's, he's ah, a puncture. Oh. It was due to a puncture. So Lin had to pit due to a puncture. And that's very unusual. Let's hear what he says. You have to make sure you don't slot. Yeah, you will slot back in the same position. Okay, so now I've got uh, Wemi now at Gen 1. Interesting. Slotting back in the same position. Okay. So to go back for a second and talk about Oliver Rowland, I've done races before where with an internal combustion car. A lot simpler than this with, with, with fuel and the engineers are giving you fuel numbers to meet to make you know an Indy car to meet the end of the race. But the level of information that a Formula E driver has to take in, absorb and act on in the cockpit is uh, is like nothing I've ever seen. So yeah, the task, Oliver Rowland's task today is it's not nothing's impossible in life, but it's just so difficult. Safety car in this lap. So we are coming down to turn 11. Lights are off on the mini electric pace setter. And now Pascal Verlein will start to back the field up. Everybody will try and catch the back of the safety car, but it's not that easy to do because you don't want to lose and use a load of energy catching the back of the safety car. But Verlein's going slowly enough that it should be fairly doable. Yeah, and remember, we're taking one kilowatt hour per minute of energy out of the battery behind the safety green car, and he's gone. Green green oh, he's gone early. So Pascal Verlein floors the throttle and the top three have managed to break away a little bit. Jean-Eric Verne has not had a good restart in the black and gold DS to Cheetah in fourth place. 37 minutes plus one lap to go as Pascal Verlein gets racing back underway through the bank left-hander at turn 15 and down towards turn one. Gunther's fairly close to him, not close enough to, to make a move, but Sims is quite close to the back of Edo Mortara. The biggest gainer in all of this is... Um, Antonio Felix da Costa. In terms of the front runners, da Costa, who's fourth in the championship, has got him in the ninth place. That would give him two world championship points. But there are the top three, four, five. Sims has dropped back a little bit and is coming under pressure from Lucas de Grassi. Uh, championship leader Robin Freitz has made up two positions to 18th place. And uh, that's the that's those are the kind of big hitters, really. De Vries is still 14th. We've talked about tyre management and stuff, but you don't want to let the drivers in front get away because at some point you're going to have to use energy and tyres to catch them up. So all of all of this stuff we've talked about, energy management, tyre management, you've got to do it while going really, really quickly as well. And we see that Verlein, Max Gunter, Jake Dennis are doing it, but Jean-Eric Verne is catching Jake Dennis in a hurry. Now you see Lynn, Freitz and Van Dorn have all activated their first attack mode because attack mode costs you quite a lot of time here. So if you're at the back of the field, you kind of want to get them out of the way and and hope that you uh, and hope that that comes to help you later on in the session. We'll see at the attack mode zone later. But if Verline were to take attack mode now, he'd come out in seventh position or something. Like that's how dramatic it is as he comes through turn 15 to start another lap. No, absolutely right, Jack. It's not it's not just on the outside of the track here. It's on a different part of the track, mm. and it, it's very difficult. As you say, costs a lot of time. And so at this point, everybody's settling in. You might say, oh, yeah, this, we talk about the slipstream a lot, the car following the other to save energy, Ooh. as Max Gunter locks up into turn one. But the air is so thin up here, as we see one of the Jaguars, who's that, Sam Bird, passing Norman Nato. That is now 15th place for uh, for Sam Bird. But, yeah, the air at thin at 200, and Gunter's, Gunter's got a problem. Max Gunter, or is it a transponder issue? No, no, there he is. He's getting forced out wide. So Gunter involved in a fight here. We're on board with Jean-Eric Verne, who's up into third place then. So I think that was a transponder issue for Gunter. I think it was. And there goes Verlein into attack mode now. So he takes attack mode early. Where's he going to come out? It's going to be third, is it? He's going to look to the inside of Jake Dennis. Can't quite get through. You've got two attack mode usages during the race. Each lasts four minutes, and you basically get a 35 kilowatt power boost for those four minutes. So Verlein went early. Uh, can he now fight his way back past the BMWs? And uh, apologies for that, it must have been a, a transponder issue where it didn't trigger the timer. That's why it looked as though Gunther was dropping through the field. So that might happen each lap potentially, so we'll keep an eye on that and not get quite as excited next time. <laughs> I was going to say Pascal Verlein, I thought that was going to be a lot worse for him taking attack mode, as you just said, Jack, you thought it was sort of seventh place. Third place, he's going to be loving that and the extra power that it gives him, that extra 17.5%. Watch how it works when he gets onto the straight and that accelerates down into turn one. Well, you just wonder if Gunter had maybe not saved much energy, and uh, here comes Verlein to the inside of Jake Dennis, and through he goes. Uh, and there's no defending that. No. You just, if you're Jake Dennis, you just think, okay, right, 
Did I'll, uh, I'll return the favor in a minute when, when I get the attack mode power. Would Verlein potentially have used a lot of energy to build a bigger gap to then activate attack mode? Because you can do that if you're in the lead. If you're in the middle of a train, you can't really do that. No, you cannot because you don't, you're not in control of when you actually lift, when you break. You're, if you're leading the race, you're in control of all those things, exactly how to carry the most momentum possible and control all those different things. She turned seven, which caused all kinds of problems this morning with people going off and hitting the wall on exit. Any takers for attack mode this lap? Oh, there we go. It looks like one of the uh, I Neo was cars. Ev I think it was Evans or Turvey. It was Turvey and uh, Oliver Rowland who went through attack mode and then pops out just alongside the Mercedes EQ car there and uh, manages to, to stay in front there, Oliver Rowland. So he's up behind Oliver Turvey. But Gunter leads the way. Verline is second. He's in attack mode. Dennis is third in the other BMW. Vern and Mortara, the top five in Puebla. On board with Lucas Degrassi running in seventh place in the Audi, up behind Alexander Sims in the red and white Mahindra in front. Degrassi, the champion in season three. And we've talked about the great racing that Lucas Degrassi does. As you can hear the car, that noise is the car hitting the ground through the oval. Degrassi, a fabulous racing driver, as he looks like he's going to try and pass Sims. He does up the inside into turn one. That lovely pass. This is Lucas Degrassi has got as good racecraft as any driver in Formula E, but his qualifying has let him down this year. But look out today, I think a little cheeky podium from Lucas Degrassi <laughs> is not out of the way. He uh, qualified 15th for the Mexico City Epri in uh, Season 3, then picked up damage, had an early pit stop and managed to win the race. Won't be quite that dramatic today, I wouldn't have thought, but he's still in the, in the hunt for some good points because, as you say, he hasn't qualified well, but has often climbed a long way up the order. Gunter leading, 1.1 seconds ahead of Pascal Verlein. The other reason that the attack mode is less advantageous here is it's not a power sensitive circuit so the more power you're using the less power you're using doesn't really matter a huge amount big lock up from Gunter and from Vern and there is Sims going back past Lucas Degrassi into no that's, uh, no that's Rast oh that's Rast, Rast trying is to get all Sims. Of, yeah Sims is defending heavily so he is in trouble him and the Mahindra car is in trouble in race trim uh, qualified very very well as you said Jack didn't do any laps in practice uh, this is where Lucas Degrassi setting up Edo Mortara ahead of him in the black and white Venturi looking to make a move into turn one. Degrassi's taking a slightly wider line around the, the last corner, trying to save the tyres a bit, put less load through the tyres, and that should help them live a little bit longer. Not quite close, quite close enough for uh, a pass on Mortara just yet. Evans looking to the inside of Lotterer, but uh, for 10th place, not achieving anything. Max Gunter, Pascal Verlein, Jake Dennis, jean eric Verne, Mortara and Degrassi are the top six that have broken away a little bit in the lead of this Puebla e Prix in the Mexico's fourth largest city, mainly an industrial city. It's actually big for car manufacturers. Audi have their biggest plant outside of Germany, just about 60 kilometers from here, and one of their most technologically advanced. And there, into attack mode, meanwhile, goes the uh, race-leading BMW of Max Gunter. So Pascal Verlein is back into the lead, in the Porsche, Dennis is up into second place, and Gunter managed to come out in fifth spot then. Degrassi is up into fourth position, and straight away, he's going back past Degrassi, lock up from Gunter, gets it turned in, and he is uh, back up into fourth place then, and this is giving him that extra power for the next four minutes. <laughs> That's what never, an extra 17.5% of power from 200 235 kilowatts looks like. It's massive any racing driver would sell a body part for half that kind of advantage in a in a normal series Gunter ahead of Degrassi as they come through the back you can adjust kilo you can adjust kilo let's follow the beeps we do not go mental on attack Degrassi <laughs> behind on step so that's Max Gunter uh, being told by his race engineer just follow the beeps and let's not go crazy now we're in attack mode there's mitch evans passing andre lotterer so that is for ninth place now evans in the jaguar both he and sam bird are coming up the order nicely Rast just got hung out to dry a little bit but he has already activated attack mode birds made up seven places so that's the most of anyone in the field but neither of them have used an attack mode yet Indeed. so that that could uh, that could hurt them a bit when you heard them say you know, obey the beeps to Max Gunter. What the car beeps basically it tells you what to do: when to lift, when to coast, when to regenerate, which means putting energy back into the into the battery by by basically running the motor in reverse. And they do that on corner entry. And 
so the car is telling you exactly what to do. As you say, cut back from John McBurn, thought better off it with Rennie Rast. But yeah, so all those things are going on all the time. The car what to do. Um, I wonder if Oliver Rowland's beeps are actually working with the radio or has he lost those two? Quite possibly the beeps normally are part of the radio system, so if he's lost those, he's he's got to really do it old school today and completely fly fly blind. 28 plus 28 minutes plus one lap to go. That's Nick DeVries, the second place man in the championship. Was up in the top 15, but he's made a mistake at turn 11. And we've seen so many people lock up today in turn 11. There's a part where they have to turn and break at the same time, and it's caught so many people out. Look how the line has moved up through turn 15, the last corner. Everybody's, again, trying not to stay down low anymore because it puts too much energy through these tyres. So far, the pace looks not too bad. I thought it would start to fall off by this point. We're Here nine comes, laps into the race. Sorry, the Jaguar of uh, Bird was going for Lotterer. I don't think he managed to get through. We're now riding with... Gunter, who's in fourth place, up behind Jean-Eric Verne. This is driver's eye. We're inside Gunter's helmet. It's a fantastic, accurate view of what the German from Obertsdorf is seeing just now. You pushing a load of buttons. He was told he could change the kilo a moment ago, wasn't he? Yeah, and you see him pushing buttons, pulling paddles, changing switches. It's all going on all the time, and he's trying to keep the car on the circuit with pinpoint accuracy as Rast goes for the attack mode activation zone. So does Alexander Sims. So Verlein in the lead, Dennis second. I'm sorry, Verne that was third. Sims. That was okay. not Rast, sorry. But Dennis and Verne have yet to activate one of their attack modes of one of the two. Uh, I also think that yeah, Oliver Rowland didn't activate attack mode. He went through it. We saw him go and try and go through the loop. So maybe there's some software issues with the car as well because the weird start. Yeah, not some... activating attack mode. Well, you have to arm attack mode before you take it, don't you? There's a yeah. button you have to press, and maybe they, he forgot, or maybe, as you said, there's a bigger issues. As we see, the BMW of Max Gunter is, is really lining up Jean Eric Byrne to make a pass. Look, he's, he's oh. below. Oh, so goodness me, so that's Dennis. Wow, Duke Dennis. Oh, that's Dennis watching Gunter. So that is where. I think that was that earlier on in the race where Gunter suddenly disappeared that because he missed the transponder point because he was on the grass. Yeah, oh, so De Vries was a collision with Franks apparently. Okay. Yeah, we're looking. Dennis saying, should I go attack? I think it's not a bad time to do it, to be honest, because there's a nice gap he'd come out behind Jean-Eric Verne. Well, if they're looking, they better hurry up. Yeah, I think that was said, use attack. He's got two corners to go until he does. Loic Deschamps he's talking to there on the radio there and there goes. goes Jake Dennis into attack mode right to the outside activates it is he going to get out oh he does lose another that's but how much time you lose comes out behind Mortara and uh, just in front of Lucas Degrassi who's also in attack mode so Gunter's now back up into second place we're on board with Degrassi and he's got to make this move into 11 Jack he, in any second you get held behind he hasn't managed it because Lucas Degrassi is going to be all over the back of his car too look how close Degrassi is to the back of Jake Dennis's car. But Jake Dennis has got to get past Iro Mortara because it's just bleeding time away when you've got that extra power that you really need to use at this point. So, Vern has two attack modes remaining, you can see on the left-hand side. So do the two Jaguars, Evans and Bird. So they're going aggressive with these uh, attack modes, maybe to try and get track position. Verlein's going aggressive just with life. He's three seconds clear of Gunter and Vern in second and third positions. Absolutely dominant this so far for, for Pascal Verlein. Yeah, we haven't talked about them at all. I think the Porsche guys are absolutely flying. We see the two Jaguars nose to tail. And Sandberg not making a move on his teammate Mitch Evans yet. You see the two teal and blue, teal and black colored Jaguars in your screen. Foss for blue. Foss for blue. And you, yeah. Foss for blue. Yeah. And there's white and black Porsche and he, Pascal Verlein just going about his business. Pulled now, away another six tenths that lap now to Max Gunter. Is he basically just going for his second attack mode? Over consuming potentially, then using his second attack mode. He should be a strategist, Jack. This is impressive stuff today. So there we go. He's used both his attack modes. He resumes the lead of the race. He's in a good position here now, is, uh, is, is Pascal Verlein. He's still got quite a lot of energy. Oh, so has, oh. And, and John Eric Verne, was, uh, was that a collision? Or Verne was further up the road. Verne's going slowly. He just activated attack mode, and he's in a lot of trouble, John Eric Verne. He was in the podium places, but now he's slowing down. Did Sims and him get together when they, when they meet up on the exit of turn eight from the two different parts of the circuit? Let's hear from oh, can we pit? Oh, the guy, no, the guy is destroyed, the guy is completely... Okay, yeah. yes, look at the damage on the, the the wheels, the front wheels are pointing in, it sounds like Sims and him came together, it's two completely different parts of the track. 
And this is a good opportunity for Jean Eric Verne. Here comes Lucas Degrassi now. He's right on the back of Jake Dennis. They're going absolutely wheel to wheel as they come down the start, finish straight. Degrassi's got to get it done now because otherwise he'll run out of attack mode. Down to turn one. I think Dennis has done enough to hold on to that place. Now, Mortara has ended up in a good position. There's the Alan McNish, team principal of the Audi team, but Mortara has snuck up to third place. He's used an attack mode. He's only a second behind Max Gunter in second, and he's and he's fully in the fight. Uh, Robin Fries has been given a 10-second time penalty for causing a collision, so we haven't seen that incident with Nick de Vries, but Fries has been given a penalty for it. He's 14th, so neither of the top two in the championship are going to score this afternoon. Sims goes for attack mode, you see, and the Mahindra going through the uh, the sensors. They're going back to Lucas Degrassi for a second. He's driving for his Formula E future because Audi are leaving at the end of the season. He's been a long-time Audi driver, never driven for another manufacturer in Formula E. So he is driving for his FE future. Wants to stay in the championship. This offers to go to sports cars, but this is this is really where he wants to be and what a job he's doing. So this is what happened to Jean Eric Verne. Look right at the back of your picture here. Look at the orange. Well, that doesn't. This, it looked as though Sims was kind of far enough alongside, but it's difficult to tell from that angle. Yeah, or far enough ahead, possibly. But yeah, let's, sorry, that's what I meant. Yeah, oh, this on look. board with Vern then. He's going through attack mode now. Look to the right, and... Ooh. Oh, it's a, it's a close one. It's a I don't know. One. I mean, everybody else has managed to, yeah. to coexist there. And Sims, you know, I don't know if he didn't see him. It's a very funny angle. Anything from, from basically 30 degrees ahead all the way to the... To you, where your mirrors come in is a complete blind spot, and that was definitely in Alexander Sims's blind spot and in his defence. De Costa, Van Dorn, Bird, De Vries, and De Grassi are the five drivers who have been given the fan boost, so they will get an extra boost of power they can use at any point in the second half of this race to try and gain places after winning the online vote. And uh, they'll have it for sort of three or four seconds to try and make a move or defend a place as De Grassi now goes into attack mode. Twenty-one and a half minutes, plus one lap to go. Lucas de Grassi has just activated his second attack mode. He's come out in fifth position. Uh, sorry, sixth position, because Evans has got ahead of him. Evans is having a lovely little race. So is Sam Bird. Both Jaguars making good progress. But Pascal Verlein is 1.4 seconds clear at the front of this field. Evans sets the fastest lap of the race. Gunter is in second position. And that man there, Pascal Verlein, he's, he's one and a half seconds ahead, having taken both attack modes as well. So that's worth a lot more time than that. He's had a fairly imperious performance so far. And I, I'm surprised I haven't seen the car sliding more through turn 15 so far today. I mean, we're almost halfway through the, well, halfway through the race and I would expect a bit more uh, a bit yeah. more opposite lock. So there's Pascal Verlein at, uh, just at the bottom of the screen. And then there goes Gunter, Mortara is behind. And then it is Dennis and Evans, the top five. 20 minutes plus one lap to go. Verlein in a... Strong position, but only eight tenths ahead of Max Gunter. But Gunter still has an attack mode to use. Will that help or hinder the German driver in second position? If it finishes like this, Verlein would move one point behind Robin Freitz at the top of the championship. And there goes Gunter. Mortara follows him, and that means Jake Dennis is back up into second position now. So Verlein leads. Dennis back up into second, and there's Mortara and Evans fighting it out, and Mortara comes out just in front of Evans. That was key for Mortara, because he's now got the clear track ahead of him. He can close that gap. Had he got stuck back behind Mitch Evans, that would have uh, cost him valuable seconds. And this is all still to play out with 19 and three-quarter minutes plus one lap to go, Jack. It is all simmering up, isn't it? Uh, Boemi's up into 20th place. His penalty earlier on, by the way, was, uh, was a stop-go penalty because after qualifying, they changed the electric motor, the gearbox, and the inverter on that car to try and cure whatever issues he's been having recently, basically. Now, here come the two BMWs, nose to tail. Lucas Degrassi's going to try and pass Mitch Evans, but Pascal Verlein is miles ahead in the lead. Here comes Gunter, and he goes past Jake Dennis, coming down into Turn 1. So, Gunter's in a good position here. And meanwhile, Evans can't get ahead of Degrassi. Oh, sorry, that's Degrassi going ahead of Evans. My apologies. So Degrassi up into fifth, Evans down to sixth. Sims running out of his attack mode there. That's uh, Roger Griffiths, the team principal of BMW i Andretti, who are looking 
Like they're in a good position for a, for a double podium here. Yeah, but Jake Dennis has still got to take another attack mode, Jack. So I, I'm getting on it right now, I think, just to... Uh, he's not chosen to do that because these guys behind are going to start closing up. And then when he takes attack mode, he's going to lose even more positions. As you see, one of the Jaguars going into attack mode. I think it might be Mitch Evans take his last one. I no, Sam Bird. Bird. Yeah, Sam Bird. Oh, and he's been hit into the wall by Lynn. Lynn and Bird collide again. Oh. And Sam Bird is out of the race. That's going to bring out a safety car. And the Englishman is going to be furious. And fairly, rightly so. And there's the fight now for Da Costa. That's Antonio Felix Da Costa getting past Alex Lynn. And the safety car is deployed then. Safety car deployed. And everyone will queue up behind Verline. So all of a sudden, that big lead Verline had evaporates. Yeah, but it's worse for Jake Dennis because he's still got an attack mode to take as the field yes. has closed up because he had a, a, a quite nice gap to maybe the fifth or sixth place car. That's not a good move for Jake Dennis. Not as bad, obviously, as for Sam Bird, but not, not great. So, safety car deployed. Pascal Verline leading the way because Sam Bird is in the wall and out of the race. So here's what happened to Sam Bird coming out of attack mode and it's, it's pretty similar to the other Mahindra incident, isn't it? Almost yeah, identical. It's identical in that blind spot, the same thing that happened to Alexander Sims. The same thing with the other Mahindra with, with Alex Lynn. And it, it's, that, it's in that complete blind spot, Jack. And if you haven't got a spotter, which he hasn't, none of the drivers have, you, uh, you're you not fixated on that at all. Yeah. Big championship implications for Sam Bird. Well, is it? Freins isn't scoring any points. Uh, yeah, Devries isn't scoring any points. Yeah, but you've got to make hay with the sunshines, don't you? You've yeah, got to be absolutely. able to take an advantage. Every time you're in a point scoring position, you've got to take it. Because we've talked about being consistent and how difficult it is to actually be consistent in FE. So when you can score points, you better uh, take advantage of it. So safety car deployed. Dennis, like you say, running in third place with an attack mode still to use up. That'll cost him a lot of ground now that the field is packed back together. A shout out to Oliver Rowland, he's 12th. He hasn't used any attack modes, and I don't think the car is allowing him to do that. Which, yeah. God, that's harsh. What a that harsh day. That last lap, he did a two minute, he lost three seconds in the middle sector, so he tried to activate attack mode again, again and again, yeah. it hasn't worked. So, from second on the grid and looking strong, I, I thought that. Roland and uh, Fern were going to be in a great position to move into championship contention after this. Yeah. Well, you did say you thought Fern was going to lead the championship going into New York, which is, is obviously still possible that he could be leading it. But uh, yeah, not a, not a good day for him either. Some of the big championship contenders. 16 minutes plus one lap to go. Is it? Okay, I don't know. The incident's on driver's left. It's on driver's left being recovered. Please stay to the right. Stay to the right, please. So that's uh, Scott Elkins. Sam Bird looking forlorn by the side of the track. We're under safety car conditions because crashed out in an incident with Alex Lynn. Is that... We've seen two incidents there now on the say, on the attack mode rejoin. It's, we, we, don't, we don't tend to see it that often. Is it well, because of the location? Is it because of the... It's a different part of the track. You know, normally you can see some of that out of your peripheral vision but it's a completely different part of the track and we've seen two i would describe them as identical situations the drivers the the, the Mahin, both cars that were in the wall ended up in the mahindra's blind spots so here we go here are the two championship leaders france and de Vries. france goes to the inside oh has a huge lock up and wipes out de Vries. first and second in the championship the two dutchmen won't be scoring points today because of that and it almost like qualifying in qualifying at turn one Schreitz had a huge front lockup, couldn't get it stopped, and he's not trying to attack De Vries there. No, he's, I don't know if he got blindsided by the, the Mahindra in front, what happened there, but he, God, he came from a long way back. That wasn't a, a marginal thing, that just, yeah, something's got, it looks like something's gone wrong. Yeah, so that's uh, both Envision Virgin cars out of contention. Linen Bird is under investigation for causing a collision. I don't think that uh, Sims. Lynn and, uh, oh, sorry, Sims and Vern oh, was. To me, they were identical, so it'll be interesting to see what uh, what decision is made. Um, yeah, Lucas Degrassi running fifth right now. That's an inter a very interesting story. The Both Audis in the top seven, both BMWs in the top three. Yeah, fascinating as we look at the rolling hills of Puebla. 
just a uh, hundred kilometers or so east of Mexico City. The, the huge mountains there. There's an active volcano a little bit further away that overlooks the city. Let's get an update, shall we? Let's join Nikki Shields. Nikki. I don't think we're hearing from Nicky at the moment, but we'll try and get back with James Barkley in a moment. Obviously, his other car, Mitch Evans, is in sixth, but he's in the same position as Jake Dennis. Only one attack mode remaining. 13 minutes plus one lap to go. There is Robin Freitz, championship leader. Safety car will be coming in this lap. If it finishes like this, then it's 25 points for Pascal Verlein. But look at the gap to Mortara, yeah. Dennis to Mortara. I don't know, I don't quite understand why they don't bunch up under set. I know they want to not use too much energy, but the safety car isn't going that no, fast, is and, it? And they're going to take energy away. They're going to take one kilowatt hour again per minute. Battery holds 52 kilowatt hours total. So I would be sitting pretty close if I if I could. Lights are off on the safety car. We're about to be going again. Pascal Verline coming through the final couple of corners. Now we went really early last time. It worked. It worked. I'd be doing the same thing. But you, it, want to, you want to catch the car behind when he's turning a lot. Okay. So when they accelerate, they have a snap of overs. So you want to make sure you're straight, they're turning a lot. That's the, that's the plan anyway. That's now, the theory from the commentary booth. Yeah, exactly. They've all bunched up now behind Verline. So all of a sudden, Mortara is with the back of the pack. And he's doing it differently this time. Pascal Verline, there Green he goes. Green flag. Green flag. Verline floors the throttle. And Gunter is kind of with him, actually. It didn't look like he was. But he's managed to stick there. So 12 minutes plus one lap to go. Verline leads. Gunter second. Dennis third. Mortara fourth. The Grassi is fifth. And look how close Gunter is to Verline. He has slightly less usable energy, but the I don't think the energy reduction has happened yet. So we'll keep an eye on that one. Down towards turn one we go. Yeah, thanks. Gunter wasn't quite close enough to make the move, but he made a great restart. And uh, Pascal Verline just seems to have it all in control today. Again, ice cold when it counted, no mistakes. Be interesting to see if Mitch Evans goes for his attack mode activation zone on this lap, as does that man there, Jake Dennis. Let's see, a couple of corners to go as we come through turn seven. Pa the attack mode activation is the next corner in turn eight. Here they come, in towards the right hander, and is, I think you've got to wait and let the you field spread out of it, don't you? Absolutely, that's well, the only thing. Roland's going to give it another go, yeah. so yes. Roland goes it's into attack mode just for... to try and get it to work, and it doesn't look like it has, so, I mean... <sighs> this point but I mean I'm holding out the pit board saying box box to be honest yeah. save the tires save the save the, the battery. battery yeah all those things Jack you, there's you know, there's a lot of wear and tear in a racing car and there's a potential to you know have an, have an accident as well with the level of frustration that Oliver Rowland must be feeling right now Verline's pace here today is <laughs> absolutely phenomenal the Porsche driver is having a wonderful race now he has started fairly high up in a lot of races so far this season but his uh, best result was a third place in the in the second race in Rome but he's managed to qualify second on the grid in Diria he was third on the grid for that race in Rome and Eduardo Mortara is looking racy Mitch Evans is looking racy as well there is Stoffel van Dorn making a move and that is on Alex Lynn and that used fan boost so van Dorn used his fan boost to get past Lynn there there's usable energy remaining, and whoop, Joel Eriksson having a bit of a moment, but Gunter has less usable energy remaining than Pascal Verlein in the lead of the race. So he's going quickly and using energy, but Pascal Verlein, race leader, under investigation for a technical infraction. We'll try and get to the bottom of what that is, but that is big, big news for the story of the race if something is to come of this. And you don't want to see that if you're There's one of these... Emil Lindsay, the team principal, and he's going to want to try and work out what that is too. Oh, absolutely. If you're one of those guys in the Porsche garage, you do not want to see that pop up on your screen and in your headset. The BMW is running again, nose to tail. Jake Dennis trying to build the gap on Edo Mortara behind him, but he's only half a second ahead of him. He's got to build that gap if he wants to take the second attack mode and not lose a lot of positions. Antonio Felix da Costa running ninth at the moment in the champ. He's a second, or, I'm sorry, fourth in the championship. So he's uh, he's trying to every point counts, you know, at this point. Nine minutes plus one lap to go. Remember, Pascal Verline was winning the race no problem in season five, right up to the line in Mexico City before 
He lost the race to Lucas Degrassi. De Costa on fan boost, coming out of the final corner. And he is, and there goes uh, Dennis. So Dennis goes past Gunter now, and I wonder if he'll try and make a little bit of a breakaway to, to, to gain enough of a gap to then use attack mode. Maybe they'll even work together. The attack mode from De Costa did get him past Sims and up into eighth place. Yeah, at this point he's got to use a little bit of energy, doesn't he, just to, to try and limit the limit the damage. No further action with the Lynn Bird incident. It's a, it's a tough one if you're Sam Bird, but def I, I see them both as a, as a racing incident today, and that's, uh, that's not a cop-out. Porsche don't know what the problem is. Emil Lindsay, the team principal, unaware of what it is. So we will get to the bottom of it as soon as someone knows. Oh, obviously, someone oh, knows. You know. Exactly. Yeah, they're not telling us what it is, though. But uh, Porsche, uncertain at the moment. So we'll try and get to the to the bottom of that as quickly as possible, as will the Porsche team. And uh, Verline, I mean, maybe the technical infraction is just being too fast. Too dominant. Because he's been absolutely awesome today. There's no other word for it. Yeah. He's been absolutely on it. Cool as a cucumber on the grid, totally focused. And uh, yeah, really a, a fabulous job ah. so far. Oh. Roland, Buemi and Lotterer are also under investigation. So two Porsches and two Nissan Edams are under investigation for a technical infraction for the same thing. They're all the same thing. So two teams, both cars. Who were on the front row. And Seymour Tara looking, he's going to have a go at Max Gunter. Max Gunter defends to the inside. Dramatically. Oh, up. big lock up on the rear. Mortara, he's done that before, hasn't he? In uh, Rome on the final lap, has a huge lockup, saves it again. He loves a good old save, Mortara. Yeah, I wonder if he's grabbed the, the regen paddle and it's just overdone it, maybe. But that was that was quite impressive. You know, Stig Blomquist, Ari Vatten, and they'd be proud of that one, wouldn't they? <laughs> Seven minutes to go. On board with Lucas Degrassi. He's running in fifth place. He's still ahead of Mitch Evans. Now, Evans and Dennis are going to have to take their attack mode soon because you have to use it all up by the time you finish the race. So and the last thing they want is what happened in Rome where the race goes under full course yellow and yeah. they can't use it, then they're at the back of the grid. So you've got to, you've got to keep, bear that in mind too. That's a potential pitfall. Very tough one to call. If it finishes like this, Pascal Verlein will move second in the championship, one point behind Robin Freitz. But he's under investigation, so... Who knows? Six and a half minutes plus one lap to go. Dennis is now pulling away a little from Gunter. I don't know if uh, it was a, it was the quickest lap of the race for Jake Dennis. Gunter was a second slower, so he's trying to build that gap up. Jake Dennis in second place. Six minutes plus a lap to go. Through the banking. Tell me that's not cool. It's great. <laughs> Look at the yaw in the cars too, as we see Mortara again attacking Max Gunter. Gunter with another subtle defensive manoeuvre. <laughs> subtle. So is he just is he just kind of being as uh, De Vries goes past Alex Lynn? Is he defending that dramatically to back them up? Is that is that the plan for Gunter here? Uh, very well could be. You can see Alex Lynn is struggling a bit on energy, but he's brought it back. But the you know the, the Mahindra cannot really compete with the, the Mercedes guys. They started at the back and they're making their way back through to Freese after being harpooned earlier by Robin Freins. Yep, there he goes. Dennis takes attack mode now, as does Mitch Evans. Dennis comes through. He's gonna so he's gonna emerge in the pack. Whereabouts is the question. I think it's uh, just behind Acosta. Well, so far he's in one piece, so that's uh, that's the, th the first thing to get uh, to get done emerging from attack mode. So that's seventh place for Dennis. Now he has to try and fight his way up the order, and Mortara sends it in at 11, and Gunter's getting mugged. Mortara's up to third. The Grassi's up to fourth. Rast is trying to get through as well. So. Whether that, if that was intentional backing up, he's lost a lot of places and pace now. More, um, Max Gunter from second position, Edo Mortara flying, looking for his second podium finish of the year. And Degrassi as well up to third, but that's what happens when you get onto the, the, the dirty part of the track. Look at the marbles on the circuit, and uh, as soon as you get onto that, it's like ice, and it takes several corners to... Look at the marbles on the outside there. It takes several corners to clean the tyres off and get some grip again. Very low grip surface anyway. So just two drivers in attack mode, Dennis and Evans. Here comes the Jagger, passing the Mahindra. Mitch Evans on, Ma on Alex Lynn. And that's attack mode against no attack mode. So that's 10th place now for Mitch Evans. Four minutes plus one lap to go. Eduardo Mortara in the Rocket Venturi is up into second position. Really strong drive this from the, uh, from the Swiss racer. 
Uh, he's up ahead of Lucas de Grassi, who's also had a great drive. Pascal Verlan in the lead has had a great drive, but he and his teammate Andre Lotterer and the two Nissan Edams cars are under investigation for a technical infraction. Bold from Rast, and he makes it through. Forces his way past Gunter. Classic Rene Rast style. Oh, and there's contact there as the Costa tries to get past Gunter as well. To the outside, Gunter's struggling. This is surely heading straight to the wall, no, but it has allowed Jake Dennis to get through ahead of De Costa. So the BMWs that were running second and third now running fifth and sixth. Dennis didn't get ahead of Gunter, but he has got ahead of De Costa, who's dropped to seventh. And Max Gunter is in all kinds of trouble. I don't know if he's overheated the tyres and we're just we're going to start seeing this, uh, the, the start of that downward spiral or not, but he is in all kinds of problems. Will two safety cars help the tyre wear? Yeah, absolutely. And it cools the tyres down as well, which is equally important. It's not so much to wear, it's, it's temperature. It's, it's just the thermal, you know, the thermal properties of the tyre. As we see Jake Dennis going past his teammate, Max Gunther. Oh, oh, De Costa locking up, just making the corner. But he's losing out here to Alexander Sims. Sims gets through, absolutely ginormous lockup from Antonio Felix De Costa. He was about to try and take fifth position. He's now down in eighth place in the DS de Cheetah after fighting so hard to get up the order. Van Dorn is in ninth, Evans is in tenth. Evans can see two places ahead of him because he's still got two minutes of attack mode to go. So Verlein leads by Miles, Mortara is second, Degrassi third, Rast fourth, who's having a good race. In fact, this is a great day for Audi, finally, to be honest, after the year that they've had. Dennis is in fifth. And Rast has got 1% more energy than Degrassi. That, that allows him to stay on the throttle just a bit longer. And Degrassi has more than Mortara, so these three are in reverse order. And if Verlein gets... This could be for the win of the Puebla E Prix. And trust me, Lucas Degrassi is well aware of that, as, as is Edo Mortara, but De Degrassi's car, the body language of it, just looks so much more comfortable right now. Frustration for Jerome D'Ambrosio. He's won in Mexico before, back in the first visit here. Alan McNish, don't actually know if he's won in Mexico. He's won everywhere, well, pretty much. That's true, but here they come. One minute 30 plus a lap to go, on board with Degrassi. He's right up behind him. The fight for second place goes for it. Degrassi through. And that's that 1% of energy, Jack. He can just stay on the throttle longer. That's him up to second. But, I mean, he's not catching on track. He's not catching Pascal Verlein. But as you see, if Verlein gets, uh, gets a penalty, this is for the win. Jake Dennis has run out of attack mode in there in uh, fifth position now. He and Evans have both used up all their attack modes, as has everyone in the field, basically, except Oliver Rowland, who has pitted and retired from this one. But second is Degrassi, third is Mortara, fourth is Rene Rast, and Rast is going to be the next driver to try and pass the Venturi driver. A minute plus one lap to go, so... We're going to be uh, tight here to whether it's one lap or, or two, to be honest, because... It's going to be really tight with Pascal Verlein. How many laps are, are left here? He's into the final sector now. It's about a 30-second final sector, so I think we're two to go, but everyone will have enough energy. Yeah, and some of that, that sometimes just depends how mean the driver is feeling, if he wants to really stretch everybody, if they think it's going to be a certain number of laps. But, uh, yeah, look at the energy targets. All quite similar at the moment. Alexander Sims goes past Max Gunter. Max Gunter in all kinds of trouble. Doesn't look like energy trouble, so I presume it's tyre trouble. As Rennie Rast looks like he's trying to set up Ido Mortara to pass him out of this long banked corner, turn 15. Watch him he accelerates off the corner as Pascal Verlein just goes about his business. Two more laps to go. 7% energy is enough to give you two more laps, and Rast has got 8%. So through he goes up into third position then. So Rene Rast up into third. We're still obviously, as the applause come from Audi, we're still waiting to hear what the issue is with Verlein, what the penalty is going to be for Verlein. De Costa's got ahead of Gunter now, so Gunter all of a sudden down to eighth position. BMW's pace has slipped away. And Mortara's six seconds ahead of Jake Dennis. So, you know, I think he's, he's quite safe there. And uh, Freitz is in a fight here with the Dragons down in 17th position. Well, he's had a bit of a moment. And look at this train of cars. From Max Gunter, he's holding everybody up. What, where does that go down to? You see the Jaguars involved, the Neos involved. And at the back of the train is Seti Camera on 18th. So that's about a 10 car train. It's quite, uh, quite impressive. And then at the other end of things, we have Pascal Verlein. Well, in the lead, but under investigation. Yeah, but that doesn't make any difference to the job he's done today. Sometimes yeah. 
you wonder why somebody's so quick. In days like this, Pascal Verlein's wondering where everybody else is, why why they're not as quick as he is. That's phenomenal job. Here comes Verlein across the line then to start the final lap of the race. He's got 3% energy remaining. It's a bit like season five, isn't it? Degrassi closing in on Verlein, well, but he's not closing in. Verlein has got this one surely under control, but is it going to be taken away from him as it was in season five? There's that huge train of cars. De Costa on the attack, Gunter defending. There's a lockup from Stoffel van Dorn. There's a lockup from Nick de Vries. They all still managed to hit the apex. Verlein is still leading the way. Of course, it looks like he has less energy, but he's just further around the track, so he's always going to have a little bit less. And you watch the number increase, and you're wondering, how does that happen? That's because they're regenerating, again, putting the energy back into the battery, and uh, they need to do that to, uh, to make the, the, the end of the race. It puts as much as 30% extra in the battery as the, Nissa, as the Audis are lying astern. I'll tell you what, Rennie Rast is looking very racy here, and he's got a bit more energy than his teammate Lucas de Grassi. How uh, is it going to be team orders here? Do you think he's going to have a... Have a look at the pass into turn 11. No, I don't know. It'll be very interesting if he fancies well, it. Again, this is, could be for the win. So if I'm Rast, I'm thinking uh, he's got to do it in a couple of corners or he's, he's he made a pass into 14 earlier. Is he going to try it now on the wily old fox, Lucas Degrassi? Pascal Verlein is coming around the final corner. The Porsche driver thought he had won in Mexico City in season five. He comes through the final corner now. The checkered flag is going to fall. Pascal Verlein takes the checkered flag in Puebla, but it's the two Audis who come across the line in second and third. De Grassi ahead of Rast. What a drive for Audi. But we're just waiting to hear what has happened to Pascal Verlein on that investigation. Mortara comes across the line in fourth, Sims is fifth, and then it's very, very close in behind with De Costa in there, Van Dorn, Evans, De Vries, Gunter, Lynn, 12. and there's the disqualification. Is there's a penalty for... Good drive, Lucas. It's Good a penalty drive. for uh, Porsche. Luca, pick up, please, pick up, Lucas. Make it to the, to the box. It's a penalty for Check Porsche. Pressures, if needed, uh, some burnouts before you in the box. Great job. A disqualification for what? I mean, the Pascal Verlein has been disqualified for a technical infraction. Verlein is disqualified. Technical infringement. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How many times has he won in Mexico now? <laughs> Lucas de Grassi wins for the third time in Mexico. That is his first win, the Brazilian, for a long, long time. Superb drive. His last victory came 21 races ago at the end of season five. And let's hear what he's if he stopped shouting, Dario. Lucas, congratulations. That was a fabulous drive and a, probably a slightly surprising win for you. And a one-two for Audi. Congratulations, Lucas. I heard the monkey! Woo Come on! I heard the monkey! Woo Come on! Something tells me we might be seeing another topless Lucas de Grassi. We saw it when he uh, when he won brilliantly all those years ago in Mexico. This, I mean, a fabulous job by Lucas Degrassi and Rennie Rast. Spare a thought for Pascal Verlein. I mean, he was imperious form today. Mighty. Oh, a bit of donuts. Hey! Good lad. Don't hit the wall though. You've got to use that car again tomorrow when we get a have another little play. I love that. Bit of emotion. Verlein was about to be second in the championship. Tires, um, not 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 uh, declaring the tires is the uh, is is the reason for the penalty for for the Porsche of uh, Verlein and Lotterer. No word yet on Buemi, but he didn't finish in the points, and Roland didn't finish, so whatever. But both Porsches disqualified for not declaring their tires. That's harsh, isn't it? It's the rules. That, unfortunately, it's the rules, but it's not a performance enhancing thing. And God, it's harsh. Wow. Lucas Degrassi, that man there, not complaining though. No, absolutely not. Verline with a superb drive, but it was so, so.
it's the kind, it's the, I'm presuming a tire declaration is not something that impacts performance, right? This, this is a, this is a, you know, a clerical error. Like when Van Dorn was disqualified from qualifying in Valencia, it's, it's a, a clerical issue. Dan Daniel Abt, Hong Kong. Yeah, yeah. I've seen it before. <sighs> Doesn't make it any easier. But it makes it a lot sweeter for a Audi 1 2. The championship standings then, I don't think they're going to change a, a huge amount, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, Degrassi's going to pick up 25 points, but it's only going to take him to 39. He's not going to just get into the top 10. And here is Pascal Fairlein making his way back into the pit lane. And, uh, well, what disappointment for the Porsche team. But what thrills for the Audi team. This is Rene Rast, second place finisher. <laughs> There's Alan McNish, absolutely elated down at the front. And for the Audi team, that is their third 1-2 in their Formula E history. They are now with the team with most. The S2G to have two, and uh, Mercedes EQ have one. Third place, Eduardo Mortara. As he comes up, you can see the, the pride flags either side of Mortara's helmet there. Venturi supporting Pride Month, which has uh, been fantastic. Check out their campaign about that. But Lucas Degrassi comes up. And he is the winner of a Formula E race. The local volca volcano here, Popo Catepetal, has erupted 12 times since Lucas Degrassi last won a Formula E race. I think now it's Degrassi that's erupting. Didn't win a race in season six is finally on the top step again. The season three champion and a one, two for Audi. Degrassi started eighth on the grid, Rath started ninth. Others fell away, had issues, had technical problems, had disqualifications, had crashes. Audi kept it all together and take their third one, two in Formula E. And how much does that bring them back into championship contention? Because, OK, I say that Degrassi has uh, picked up 25 points. So that takes him to 39, which basically brings him up into ninth in the championship, eighth or ninth in the standings. And there's Verline straight to the back of the garage. Disaster for Porsche. And a high five with uh, Andre Lotterer. Well, a, a pat on the back, let's say. And that's it. That's all we're seeing from Pascal Verlein today. But point being, if Degrassi gets another huge point score tomorrow, suddenly he is in the uh, in the top of the standings or in the, in the championship fight. And also, uh, Rene Rast. Now, he had 39 points. He's picked up 18 today. He's up to 57. Rast moves to third in the championship. He's joint second in the standings. Level on points with Nick De Vries. No, that's incorrect, because De Vries scored two points. So now Freitz will lead the championship on 62. De Vries will have 59. Rast will be third in the standings, I think, on 57. Obviously, we'll bring you the actual standings in a bit, but here's the results, first of all. Lucas Degrassi victorious. Half a second clear of Rene Rast. Eduardo Mortara third. Alexander Sims in uh, fourth position. Further down the order, you've got the big non-finishers. Roland, who started second. Sam Bird, who's up in the championship fight. Verne started fourth. Honestly, Lotterer and Verline disqualified. Just when you think Formula E can't get any more. What? Here we are. And this has to be one of the oldest podiums in Formula E history. Eduardo Mortara, 34 years of age. Lucas Degrassi, 
36 years of age, Rene Rast 34 as well. But what a race that was. Lucas de Grassi the winner, Rene Rast second, Mortara third. We do it all again tomorrow. Lucas Degrassi, huge congratulations up from eighth on the grid to finish your third win here in Mexico. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I'd like to, of course, say thank you for my team. <laughs> uh, we would not, uh, it's motorsport, it looks like a one person victory, but everybody in the factory put so much work uh, to get this turned around, get this luck, second half of the championship. And this win is for Audi Sport. What a way to win as well, a double Audi podium. Of course, uh, uh, I have Rene here with me. Uh, first podium for both of us this season. It's not because the, we didn't have the pace. We had the pace in a lot of races, but in the end, we could not put things together. And today we did. And uh, we are here, so congratulations to Rene. And again, congratulations to the team. Um, one, two is just an unbelievable result. Huge congratulations, and it makes up for that win that was stolen from you in Rome. Thank you. How ridiculous is it that this wasn't the craziest Lucas Degrassi win in Mexico? <laughs> like, this, this ranks third in the crazy Lucas Degrassi wins in Mexico. Barely on the podium. This was the move for the win. And I wonder how Venturi are feeling. I wonder if they think they could have won this race. I mean, look at the pace that the Audi's had in the end. Probably not. And there's the, uh, the, the that's just the happiness with second and third. Let's hear from second place. Well, Rene Ras, I can see there's a huge smile hiding under that mask. How does it feel to have your first podium this season? It feels amazing. I think uh, we showed a lot of uh, times that we had the pace to really be on the podium, like Lucas said, but we couldn't somehow put it off. But uh, yeah, today everything just went our way, one, two. Uh, luckily, I mean, uh, we had such a, such a good car again uh, this time. And uh, Lucas said before the race, he's happy with a, with a podium, a double podium for Audi. And now we achieved that. So big thanks to, to everybody uh, downstairs there from Audi Sport. This morning I had a bit of a crash. They had to repair the car. So thanks a lot. And it's uh, so good to be here. So does the championship fight really start now? You can hear lots of support from the fans here as well. Yeah, it's so cool to see the fans again. I had actually goosebumps when we did the uh, lap was for the fans. Uh, they were cheering. It's such a cool atmosphere. And uh, I love to, to see more fans in the future. Brilliant. Thanks very much. Enjoy the Thank celebrations. You. So second place for uh, Rene Rast. And this was him going past Edward and Mortara and getting up into second place. As ever, such a busy Formula E race. Well, let's hear from the third place man. Two podiums now this season. That's when Audi realized that they had actually won and not just finished second and third. Here's Mortara. Edo Mortara, huge congratulations for a podium. How did you find out that you'd moved up a step, obviously, with the disqualification of Pascal Verlein? Yeah, so my engineer told me uh, during the race that, uh, that, that Pascal was under investigation. Uh, anyway, when you're in the car, you try to maximize, uh, you know, the situation that you've got. And um, yeah, I knew that the, both Audis behind me had uh, a little bit more energy. So try to do an intelligent race. In the end, we are back on the podium. This is the most uh, important thing. Congrats to the team. They did an awesome uh, job during the break. And uh, congrats to Mercedes also for the awesome podium. Huge congratulations to you and the team. Thank you very much. Thank you. So. Another podium for Eduardo Mortara. He's going to get a big, big chunk of points as well. He'll be moving up to 47 in the standings, so uh, just a couple of points behind Sam Bird. This is how quickly it can turn around in Formula E. We will uh, clear up the make sure it's powered on, Luke. The troubles after the uh, after the podium in terms of the actual clarifications and specifics of what went wrong. But in the past. As little as Alan McNish comes up onto the podium. Another win for Audi. One of the most successful teams in Formula E. 
This is their 13th victory. DS Tuchita have 14, Nissan have 17. Eduardo Mortara. Eduardo Mortara picks up another podium finish. That is his uh, second podium in the season, finished second in the opening race in Diria. And a third here now. Great news for the Venturi squad. Rene Rast up into second place. An embrace with Alan McNish. Here he comes, though. As ever, the happiest man in Mexico is a Brazilian. Lucas Degrassi onto the top step once more. Superb drive from Degrassi. 22 races since his last win in Berlin in the summer of 2019. And he's back on the top step. And this is the Brazilian national anthem. And now the German national anthem for the Audi Sport at Schaeffler team. The win for Audi Sport App Schaeffler. Alan McNish on the podium. And now the dignitaries will congratulate the squad on the podium. Matt Enlo from the CBMM Niobium Automobile, responsible for North America. Hands the trophy over to Alan McNish. Another win for Audi. <laughs> They are over the moon with that one, aren't they? General Secretary of Hyundai, congratulating third place, Eduardo Mortara. Jorge Abad, the General Secretary of the OMDAI. And one of the Abed brothers that owns this racetrack here hands the trophy over to Eduardo Mortara in third place. The Managing Director of ABB Mexico, Vicente Magana, hands the trophy to Rene Rast in second position. Lucas de Grassi gleefully taking another trophy in Mexico. To say he's back in championship contention is maybe a little over the top, but this is round eight only. We've still got a long way to go. We've got 15 races. So we're eight out of 15 down. We're just over halfway through the season. Daniela Lujanin hands out the 
The Moe moment. They'll do the podium selfie first. And we'll be hearing from Porsche fairly soon. Once the podium is done, we'll be hearing from the Porsche squad. We'll be hearing from the team principal, Amy or Lindsay, to find out exactly what went wrong for Pascal Verlein when so much went right. There's the podium selfie. And now the celebrations will begin. How crazy, they've got to race again tomorrow. But I don't think Degrassi is going to mind one bit. He is celebrating today. It's been a long time since the Brazilian has been able to party. They've got to focus again for the race tomorrow. But what belief this will give the Audi squad. Montara's like, mate, I've got to race in these overalls tomorrow. tomorrow. But Degrassi is on his way to party. He's looking for Alan McNish. Alan McNish is looking for some alcohol. Oh no, they're all running away. This is the thing with double headers. No one wants to get wet. He don't mind, does he? Winning for granted in the first three years of the standings of the of the series, I don't know, but this one seems special. It was a long time coming. And an Audi won two. And it is the Rene Rast fastest lap. That's the second time he has scored that this season. And it's the uh, first two-time fastest lap winner of the year. That gives him another point. And while there's celebration at Audi, let's find out what went wrong at Porsche. A real disappointment in the Porsche garage. Pascal's car was absolutely flying. What a technical infraction involved in the tyres. Can you explain what it is, please? Yeah, I mean, uh, quite gutted, yeah. I mean, fantastic race from Pascal. And and start to finish, absolutely uh, flawless performance. And uh, feel sorry for Pesco. Um, fortunately, the tyres were, were in the system, just not uh, one button was missing to, to, to publish them for the race. Uh, so, yeah, we win as a team together and we lose as a team together, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. But on the flip side, we go again tomorrow, and, and you must tell, uh, build some confidence that this car is absolutely awesome in, in Pueblo. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, we were saying it all year. I mean, uh, we just need to put it all together. and. We're confident when we start at the front, we can do it, and I think we proved that today. And just, yeah, we have to uh, get it all together and, and keep everybody positive and push on for tomorrow and keep the momentum going, yeah? All right, thank you for talking to us. Nice. Appreciate it. Well, there we go, Emil Lindsay, the team principal of the Porsche team. Both cars disqualified, and Bohemian and Roland did get disqualified as well. So both Nissan and Porsche making that same mistake. Fascinating stuff, you have to say. And there is now the, the team podium celebration. Rast down at the bottom there with Alan McNish. What a delight for the Audi squad as they win again. And what does that do then for the championship? Well, I tried to work it out on the fly, but we'll see what it actually does, shall we? And you can see there, it is Robin Freitz, who's two points clear of Antonio Felix da Costa. So da Costa has jumped up into second position with that sixth place finish. Didn't see that one coming. Nick de Vries is now third. Rene Rast is fourth. Evans is fifth. Van Dorn is sixth. Four points separate the top five in the championship standings, but they'll all be out in group one tomorrow. So does it even matter? Absolutely astonishing stuff once again in ABB FIA Formula E. Uh, Sebastian Buemi didn't get off the mark again today. And as far as the team's championship is concerned, well, a big double points haul for Audi. They were coming into this in sixth in the championship. They've managed up to fourth in the championship now. 97 points. Mercedes EQ still ahead because they have got a couple of points in that. Well, both actually into the points. And as I mentioned a moment ago, we are now over halfway through the season. It's flying by, isn't it? But the two rounds in Diria, the two in Rome, the two in Valencia, 
one in Monaco, and we're halfway through Puebla in Mexico. You can see on the right, only Nick de Vries is a two-time winner this season. A remarkable year. We'll do it all again tomorrow. Well, Anna Minish, I mean, you know it's been a good day when you can smell the champagne in the air, don't you? It's been a fantastic day, <laughs> one that's been a long time coming, though, but we're back. You know, everybody's worked so, so hard. We've had some very, very difficult days, days we thought we were here, but not quite. And then suddenly it just comes back. And again in Mexico, it's just an incredible feeling for everybody. What is it about Mexico? I mean, Lucas Degrassi really does seem to have luck here, doesn't he? Well, you know, Mexico's twinned with Germany and Scotland, so clearly there's something <laughs> about it. But uh, everything just seems to click when we're here. The enthusiasm of the crowd's fantastic. And uh, we've had some tremendous successes, great races, last lap passes to win, and this is another one. But it was amazing, because speaking to Lucas Degrassi before coming into this race, you know, he wasn't, despite, I think, you know, he was down in P19 in the championship, yep. hardly had any points, but... He was still so passionate and said, you know, we've got the pace in the car. We just need things to come together. We saw that performance from him in Rome. He had the race win in his hands, but unfortunately due yep. to that drive shaft failure. So he was still just full steam ahead and wasn't kind of deterred. By from the, the first race, position. we knew we had a good car. Yeah. We knew we were competitive, but we know the competition's very strong. It was about piecing it all together. And that's so difficult in this championship with the competition levels. But I have to say, everybody at Audi at home in Neuburg, everybody here at the circuit has delivered. And we'll enjoy it tonight, but we'll also <laughs> know that we've got to try and do it again tomorrow. When you say enjoy, I mean, that means what? Do you get at least half a glass of champagne each? Or is it just full well, on analysis? I think it's here on my shot more than anywhere else. Because um, you've got a lot got of two hours, to look at, right? Then we've got the debrief, okay. and at that debrief, that's when their mind starts to go. So they've got two hours to just relax and enjoy before we'll kick on with tomorrow. Brilliant, OK. Because, you know, coming into this, there's been... I guess it's such an unknown, isn't it? It's a new track. We haven't had a new track since Season 5, so today has been a, a massive learning experience for the team. Yeah, it's a very, very different circuit. That banked corner, the final one, just the style of circuit, and also the weather conditions this morning. You know, you're always living on the edge, and with Rennie having the small accident as well in Free Practice <laughs> 1, there was a bit of recovery to go. But my father always told me it wasn't the good shots that made the good golfers, it was the good recoveries, and today was a good recovery. <laughs> It really, really was. Huge congratulations for a double podium, one, two, here in Mexico. Thanks Thank very much, Thank Anna you very much. Over to you, Vernon. Summarise what we've just seen. Congratulations, of course, to the oh, team. Uh, two guys on top of the podium. Eduardo Montaro is here as well. We're going to have a chat with him in just a yeah. second. Uh, yes, yes, it is. Yes, my mic's on. Uh, people talking to me uh, in my ear, I do apologise. Uh, yeah, my microphone is on, so I'm going to talk to you, Dario. Hi, uh, Dario, apart from the Porsche team and Pascal Verlein, who obviously we feel sorry for with the technical infringement, but we should also talk about the BMW Andretti boys. They had a 1-2 uh, at some point during that race. Yeah, Max Gunter, Jake Dennis were looking great, weren't they? And then the pace just really faded at the end, especially with Max Gunter. So I don't know what happened there, but uh, there was there was clearly an issue with them. Um, as you said, Max Gunter, you've got to just feel sorry for him. Not, what they did, it was basically a, a clerical error. No performance in increase at all by what they with, did. With Pascal Verlein. With Pascal Verlein, I'm yeah. sorry. So yeah. really, really a shame. All right, I mean, let's bring in uh, Eduardo. Bring, yeah, let's bring in Eduardo. Eduardo, come on in. Congratulations. Must feel nice to get on a podium, but we'll just bring in the, the in the boom microphone. Obviously, we're following uh, COVID protocols. Uh, what a race. Just go through your emotions, please. Yeah, I mean, uh, we knew coming here it was going to be very difficult. Obviously, you always have to, to manage the, the, the battery, the energy, but, uh, but here... Uh, uh, the tyres were, were going to be extremely difficult to manage and uh, we did that uh, pretty well, I think, today. We didn't have the pace of the Audis, but we, were, we had some good pace. And in the end, uh, I think the team deserves uh, this, this good podium and uh, very happy for the team, for, uh, for, for Mercedes also, because they provide us like a really fantastic powertrain. So, good day. You know, going to do it all again tomorrow. What did you learn today that can help you for tomorrow's race? Yeah, I, hopefully we are, <clears throat> we are going to analyze a little bit what happened uh, today. Uh, I think that we need to be a little bit uh, better in, in qualifying uh, in the race. Uh, we have like a few things to, to improve, but I think that we already know what to, to work on. So hopefully we are going to have even more pace tomorrow and we can challenge, you know, these guys, maybe if they're uh, again uh, at the front. 
Good stuff. Eduardo, thank you very much. Really appreciate Thanks, it. Thank you, guys. Uh, go and get yourself ready for tomorrow. Go, uh, let's bring in Rene Rast. Hey, congratulations. <laughs> thank you. Rene. Good to see you. It's always good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, Smell it, you had a just, big just, night. <laughs> just, just show us your smile and your relation, please. There you go. Uh, congratulations. Was there a moment there where you thought, you know what, I'm going to go for it and I'm going to go try and get first place? <laughs> no, there was not a lot of time. I think I was only two laps behind Lucas. And I knew we, we needed that uh, one, two for the championship and for Audi Sport, for the whole team. So I didn't want to, to risk it, obviously. Did I you a, think about it, though? It, yes, a tiny bit. <laughs> I, I, I had a a bit more energy, but I said, okay, just just bring it home, it's fine. Nice. Really, did they tell you it was for the win? Yes, yes, because and we knew that uh, Verlein was under investigation, so we were assuming that it could be the win. Wow, but, uh, that was very controlled of you. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, it, uh, Lucas was telling Nicky earlier on that everything is in place, you just need that little bit of luck, and today that luck came to fruition. You guys obviously a double podium. Where do you take this now? Because the team have kind of been on the cusp of success. Just a couple of breaks, that's all you've needed this season. Yeah, I think that's what we needed. Ellen just said we are back, so I'm not sure about that, but I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> um, we are still missing a bit pace and qualify. That's our biggest uh, issue. I think when we when we can pull off like a P9, P, P8 in the qualify, then we can win races. But if we start P15, P20, then it's difficult, obviously. But we showed during the whole season already that uh, the, the pace is there but we never could really show it. You mentioned there that sometimes the pace isn't there. How do you get that back? Is that a data thing? Is that a software issue? Uh, to be honest, we don't really know. I mean, Robin is just in the same car and sometimes he is, he's flying and he's on different planets and we don't understand. So I think uh, there are many teams which not 100% fully understand the whole car. Um, not saying that we don't understand it, but sometimes it's... Uh, <laughs> don't it's... talk yourself out of a job, Rene. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it's a big question mark. Yeah. Uh, Rene, it's always a pleasure and it's a real joy to see you on top of the podium. So thank, thank you. you very much. Good to see you. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, so we go again tomorrow, Dario, and let's take a look at what we can expect again in Puebla for race two of this doubleheader. And we're green in Mexico. Back to the inside, he's on Bamboos. There's a bit of contact there. Oh, Lord, they're so close. Congratulations, Lucas de Grassi. I love that smell of, of champagne and, and so much due. Congratulations, an awesome race. Uh, you said earlier on, and Nikki mentioned it, that you told her that it's, it, it's almost there. Uh, the fact that your success was hanging in the balance. Do you feel that you've achieved so much today with the one, two on the podium? Uh, of course, after what happened in Rome to us, leading the race with two laps to the end and the drive shaft just popping out, it was very painful. Then a couple of races that we had a lot of race space, but never managed to qualify in front. So it was always a difficult race. And today we did a fun the, the team did a fantastic job. The car was very good and I had the pace to, to push. I lost some time in some fights. Um, but yeah, the, it was an amazing day again in Mexico. Mexico is very special for me. Lucas, thank you very much, Dario. Lucas. How your racecraft in Formula E, how did you get so close to the car behind you, make these moves? How, how is that possible? What's, what, where's your advantage? Well, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I tried to get very close. Here it was especially difficult to get close because you lose a lot of downforce in the last corner. So even if you're very close, it's very hard to do the last corner behind. I guess that's from Ovos, uh, that I don't have the experience. So actually you cannot, I, I still have to learn that from you. Um, <laughs> you have to give me some tips. But uh, the good thing about Formula E is if you're close enough, you save energy because you're on the slipstream. So I try to stay as close, save energy and attack in the right moment. Good, Lucas, man. thank you very much, appreciate it. Nikki, over to you. Um, James Barkley, it's been a really tough day uh, for you guys, but now you've had the chance or a little bit of time to catch up with um, Samba. Talk us through that exit on attack mode. You know, was it a concern before the start of the race? Yeah, it was a bit because unfortunately where the driver rejoins, they're completely blind with the heads around. They can't, they can't look that way. And likewise, Alex in the Hindra can't see in his blind spot. So it's unfortunate, but three incidents there just shows you it's obviously very difficult. And, uh, and the drivers involved actually don't, they can't do anything about it. So really unlucky with the timing when it happened for us, couldn't have been worse. I mean, we, they both made great progress, but when it happened, it meant we 
the field grouped up. We had one more attack to take for Mitch. So unfortunately, it really destroyed our race with Mitch as well. Um, so how are we going to stop? Because obviously we've got to do all of this again yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. Stop that happening again. Well, that's really up to, to race direction. And, and, and Scott Elkin will have a look at that now and, and see if there's anything he can do for tomorrow. But I think with three incidents, it does deserve looking at because uh, the drivers, you know, they're not going to do this knowingly. And, and ultimately, that's something we do have to look at. Um, it's quite cool having the extra loop, but you have to have the join where both drivers involved can actually see what's happening. All right. Well, James Buckley, thank you very much. Uh, fingers crossed you can take a bit of a break tonight, regroup ahead of tomorrow, because there is not long, of course, before we get to do this racing all over again tomorrow here. Jack, Dario, uh, welcome, Jack. He, thank he, you. He's just run Have you been running, Jack? <laughs> <laughs> it's the high altitude it takes it out of you. Uh, Jack, your summarization of that race after an amazing race in Monaco, uh, what do you think? Just give us your summarization. Um, it was really busy. It was quite complicated. Attack mode was really difficult. <laughs> like the altitude and uh, <laughs> and uh, you just have to feel for Verline. Yeah. you have to feel for Verline. you really do dominated it would have been second in the championship a point off the lead as it is he's where he was but maybe he can replicate it tomorrow and then take the championship lead that's the thing because all of these drivers who've had good races de costa up there rast up there now near the top of the standings four points separating the top six but they'll all be in group one tomorrow and then we'll be at the back of the grid again. Yeah, well, let's get some oxygen for Jack, please. <laughs> uh, Dario, did this track in Puebla do what you expected it to do? You know, it really did. We were lucky, we had a bit of cloud cover. I think that saved the tires, you know, actually going, going south a bit quicker, but it was put on a great race today, it really did. And we thought the attack mode activation zone was gonna play, be key. It was, also the join point was key. And uh, we get to do it all again tomorrow, and the teams have all got a bit more knowledge and the drivers, some are going to be a little bit more angry than others. So, uh, yeah, fasten your seatbelts. The crazy thing for me, though, Vernon, is that's just about makes the podium of Degrassi crazy wins in Mexico. Yeah, I think well, that's the remarkable yeah, part. Well, right on cue. I know what you've got talk about, but right on <laughs> cue. You've queued it up. We're going to see it in the big screen. Uh, Lucas Degrassi once again snatching victory from Pascal Verline. Well, this was this was back in the day. This is season three. They had to replace his whole rear wing. Then he pitted <laughs> behind the safety car and everybody else still had to pit. So he managed to win from 15th on the grid. And then he snatched it from Pascal Verlein in season five. He was, uh, and this was a big moment for Degrassi. And then season five, he was chasing Verlein the whole race. Verlein looked like he was about to take his first win. And this is the final corner look. Verlein out of energy, Degrassi takes the oh. win. So the two of them in Mexico is, is just, and, and al almost put it into the yeah, wall. Yeah, the reactions Lucas had there with that slowing Mahindra in front were quite something. Uh, Pascal Verlein's going to start taking it personally here in Mexico, Mexico isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. Jack, let's talk about how Roger Griffiths must be feeling today. Team principal of BMW. Oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah. Um, and Roger Griffiths. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's tough because, uh, as you mentioned a moment ago, they were running first and second at some points, but realistically, second and third but it just kind of slipped away. And as soon as the safety car came out and Jake Dennis had another attack mode, he was kind of out of the running. But where the pace went for Gunter, I don't know. That was the strange one because he, he was keeping the pace, seemed to have the energy away it goes. Was it tires? Was it energy? Well, we'll have to find out. But he slipped so quickly. It yeah. wasn't like one place here, yeah. one place the next lap. He just fell. If the tires are done, you're done. Yeah, to me, that was either a technical issue or the tires just had, had enough and he just wore them out. But those guys, both those BMWs were quick today, which means they'll be quick again tomorrow. And that's the thing. So many people will have learned a lot from today. I think that's the, because practice happened. We had a wet practice one, a dry practice two, but it was a bit interrupted, only half an hour. The rain's coming down now as well. Tomorrow, everyone will have a huge bank of information. So they'll be able to do a lot more and a lot better. And tomorrow will be even more competitive than it is today, which uh, I can't wait for. It's going to be great. Dario, if you're the Porsche boys and the Nissan boys uh, being disqualified today, how do you rouse the team and say, look, forget it, let's go again? Well, especially if you're the Porsche guys, you say, we've got the fastest car in the place. Let's win tomorrow. The Nissan guys, they've got a lot of work to do tonight. Easy All as right. that. We cannot wait for tomorrow. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. And let's hope for Pascal Verlain, he can do it again. We'll see you tomorrow live from here, Puebla, Mexico.